Greetings, unsettled souls. If you saw the other video that went up, I said the, story, the, the show today was going to the dogs, literally. It's the second out of two stories I have. Now, I'm going to be calm enough that you can share this video to other people, which I really need you to do. If you have any kind of soul in you at all, I hope that you would share this. What these dogs are in for is they're, these dogs that we're about to be covering are going to be lucky if they're shot. Okay, you. I understand that not all of Islam is like this. Okay, here is a, I think, I'm not sure, I think, a sensible Islamic website. Okay? Let me read you this, because I'm not saying that all Islamists abuse dogs. Some Islamists own dogs. Just hear me out. It's only a 10-minute video, Max. Just hear me out, because I can't rush this through on this one. Sometimes you have to just listen. Traditionally, according to AnimalsInIslam.com, dogs have been seen as impure. And the Islamic legal tradition, let's remember that, the legal tradition dating back, what, since the inception of this insidious thing, has developed several injunctions that warn Muslims against most contact with dogs. Calling someone a dog in Islam is like swearing at them. Unfortunately, many Muslims have used this view to justify the abuse and neglect of dogs, even though cruelty contradicts the Quran's view that all animals form communities like you. Okay, stop. That's normal Islam. We are talking about the Taliban. Now, what's, what's, what's the Taliban do? The Taliban sticks to, here, look at, look at fact cam, Islamic legal tradition. In other words, the people who, wrote, who run this site probably would not mind an Islamic woman driving their car down the street or going to a movie. But the Taliban would kill her for it. Are you with me? They're following the nutcase version of Islam. Are we clear? Okay. With that in mind, we know what is going to happen to dogs that are left in Cabal. We're clear? Okay. But some people said the dogs weren't from the military, Sam. I don't give a rat's ass where they're from! Get them out of the country, you twit! <sighs> Yahoo News, friends. U.S. woman left behind in Cabal with 130 rescue dogs thanks to the Department of Defense no-fly animal policy. They could have rabies. You never know. They could have rabies. Then what are you going to do? I understand that our military cannot secure a city, a country, even a freaking airport. I was under the impression that we could bend the rules enough that we could control 130 dogs. Maybe maybe we could even sedate them. I, it's just a random thought. Do we have 130 syringes in the freaking military? I'd like to know. If anybody can tell me, maybe we don't. Maybe, maybe Joe Biden doesn't even figure that out yet. Listen to this story, friends, please. A Tennessee woman who owns an animal rescue shelter, a center, excuse me, in Cabal, was not allowed verboten passage home by the Department of Defense because she carried a disabled puppy in her arms. One of 130 animals she was ordered to leave behind in the final days of airlifts. Charlotte Maxwell Jones refused, God bless her, to board the plane without her puppy on Monday, so the military ordered her to leave and turn loose 130 crated dogs that mostly belonged to Americans and Afghans who evacuated, according to social media postings. So some people... Okay, I get it. I get it. It's more important to save your family than your dogs. I get it. But some of these people took off and left. They weren't necessarily in the military. Some of them may have been. I don't know what reports you got there, but this is the correct views. Um, 
so their lives don't matter? This occurred even though Maxwell Jones, now listen to this, secured flights from nonprofit organizations that had permission to land in a neutral country. In other words, there was no reason to do this. She left the airport after being stuck there for six days and re home, returned home to an uncertain fate. The Taliban visited Maxwell Jones at home last week and ordered her to leave with her employees, she said in a tearful video posted on Twitter. She raised $703,705 on a GoFundMe page for an animal evacuation and desperately sought a landing permit. Five minutes ago, a fairly large group of Taliban left my lawn. In other words, these were the honest, for lack of better words, Taliban who did keep their word, who said that we're going to make sure we get the people out of the country as we promised Mr. Trump. Some of the Taliban obviously kept their word. One of them had a grenade launcher, so he was clearly a nice man. They told me that I should leave immediately and tried to put guards inside my house. We settled on outside my house, Maxwell Jones said in her video. They had said they will give us safe passage to the airport for as large of a group that we have. They told me to leave first. It's very obvious what will happen. Yeah, they're going to slaughter the animals. Maxwell Jones was allowed to airlift military dogs. So she handed 46 animals to veteran sheepdogs of America to transport to Poiki. A video posted Tuesday said the dogs were in a hangar and given water in preparation for transport. However, the remaining dogs weren't so fortunate. Maxwell Jones begged the military to allow her to open bags of kibble and spread them across the tarmac for the suddenly homeless dogs, according to social media. In the end, the dogs and the caretakers were explicitly not allowed to board the military aircraft, and numerous private charter aircraft were not granted access to the airport. Why? They might be shot by a rocket. The dogs are dying anyway. Charlotte was informed that most of the shelter dogs had to be released into the airport on August 30th as the airport was evacuated, turning once rescued shelter dogs into homeless strays. What's going to happen to them when they wander onto a property? Come here, all here, want a treat? Yeah, I bet. We applied for an emergency exemption so that Charlotte and her dogs could get out on the chartered flight this week. SPC International blasted the U.S. government for this, uh, for not recognizing the human connection to animals. It said the CDC's adherence to this import policy during this time of crisis puts animals and people at risk. We are alarmed that leaders at the CDC are not bringing a more balanced perspective to the importation of dogs, especially after the U.S. House of Representatives rebuked the CDC on the issue and passed the amendment to restore the proper screening process. You can read the rest of this. I explained to you at the beginning of the video how they could have secured the dogs and made sure that no one was at risk. It's not that hard. Even for somebody who can't manage to secure an airport long enough to get the people out before he moves the military, you wouldn't think it was that hard. We're losing our soul. We're not just treating each other like dogs, but we're treating dogs like garbage. It's like we have nothing in us. Leave me a message, people. Let me know in the comment lines what you think. You can get a hold of me at the correct views at hotmail.com. Hit share, hit subscribe, and let me know particularly if you're finding this on Opera News, which I pray that you are.